Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video So in this video we're gonna create a OpenGL compatibility triangle By comp compatibility I mean the compatibility profile I won't be using the core profile Because the core, core profile is actually quite harder um, And you'll see how like you can do, do such a thing just using Luigi ITFFI um, so pretty much you only need You say uh, in my case, I have pac-man because I'm in arch linux and jar to be exact but anyways, so pseudo pac-man dash s right And you say GLW if you have x11 then say GLW dash x11 if you have wayland then say dash wayland um, for Windows and other platforms, I don't know really how you can do it, but anyway, so uh, dash x11 in my case, and then of course make sure to install Luigi IT too. For OpenGL, it's already on every system, you just need to know the specifics of how to import it, etc. Depending on operating system, but anyways, here I'm gonna use Vim. Let's go with main.lua, okay. All right, lovely stuff. Okay, first of all, I need actually FFI, so let's require that module. This module is only available in Lua GIT, of course. There we go. So I required FFI, lovely stuff. Now there is inside FFI, there is a function called cdef, where you can actually give it uh, a string. In my case here, I'm making a multi-line string. And here where you put your headers, your it's like the includes in C, but the thing is, in in uh, Lua GIT, C compiler doesn't support pre-processing. Like uh, include, define, and stuff like that doesn't work. Um, so in fact, you have to declare stuff yourself, basically, inside of here. Uh, of course, it is using the C language, right? Um, next up, you basically just... Uh, imports or link the library in some sense. So for example, gfw is equal to um, ffi.loid then you see the name of the library to link to. Uh, in this case it's gfw and for gl gl uh, will change the, the name of the opengl uh, you know, library will change depending on which platform. In my case, I'm in Linux it's called libgl.so like this, uh, but since I'm in Luigi IT, actually fills up for me. It, it sees if there is a lib, and so I don't need to to specify lib, and I don't need to specify the extension. It it, it detects that dependent on a lot of crazy stuff. So yeah, that's basically how you get GL of W and GL. But the thing is, right now I cannot actually call any function. GFW init, okay. Uh, all right, let's actually run this and let's see what's gonna happen here. So, if you say Lua GIT main.lua, first of all, let me clear. Actually, let's run a command clear and Lua GIT main.lua. So, you basically just say Lua GIT main.lua. And there we go. As you can see, missing declaration for symbol GFW init. Because in fact here you have to put the declaration of the functions that you want to use from the libraries. In this case it's GLW init. So void GLW init. And for that matter, uh, it, it gives us void and it takes in void. In fact, no, it, it gives us integer. Right, yeah, it gives us an integer. Let's make sure to have a semicolon there and there you go. Now if we try this, there you go, no problem, lovely. So GFW got, got initted, which is nice. And also let's make sure to terminate GFW. Alright, and let's actually go ahead, void, GFW terminate. And there you go. As you can see, it's all good right now, nice. Uh, the problem with this, it's not really a problem, it's just that it's an inconvenience, right? You have to always say gfw dot glfw, you know, once again, which is a lot of the just unnecessary. I would like to do it like this, you know, which is would which would be really nice. Now, how would you do it like this? Well, um, 
uh, I decided to use meta tables. Okay, so how to do meta tables? Well, let's create a meta table then. Local meta table equal to the meta table is just a table, right? Normal table. Then we're gonna add a new function to it. Uh, meta table colon index colon is just sugar syntax for dot and then passing self as the first parameter in my case i'm just saying colon there you go and so now meta table index and you can notice that there is two underscores uh, which all the meta method starts with two underscores so the meta method index which is of course a special function that means something in the context of meta tables right um, it gives you the index or the key or whatever you want to call it okay and here I actually hmm. so the thing is ffi.loid right it gives us a user data it doesn't give us a table and you cannot actually set a meta table for a user data so we have to wrap these guys in a table so we can set meta table to it there we go i just have wrapped these two guys in uh tables in tables right okay cool uh next up i would like to let's see to add a prefix to tell uh, to to store inside the table the prefix that we want to use in this case glw and in this case gl notice that for example in opengl in this case the prefix is not the same as the library name so that's why i have uh, I have them separate okay so yeah nice stuff now here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna actually use raw get because if I index directly into the table it will trigger again the meditate the meta method index and you will end up in a stack overflow because it will keep on calling itself that's why we use raw get and the first parameter is the table which is self in this case and again self is passed since we have uh, as the first parameter since we were using colon which is some sugar syntax in Lua okay so nice stuff all right interesting so raw get self comma hmm okay first of all I'm actually gonna get the library which is in this case the second element of course in Lua indexes starts with or indices starts with one instead of zero so the second element is two so I'm getting basically the library the user data and then I'm gonna index that with rocket once again I'm basically gonna get the name which is basically the first element so self one uh, that's basically the prefix right and then dot dot index index is basically what the user is trying to in our case the user is us <laughs> the developer wants to actually index but yeah anyways so now hopefully i can actually do it but before that can happen i should make make sure to set the meta table of these tables set meta table you know pass in the in the table interesting and then pass in the meta table and in fact set meta table just goes ahead it sets the meta table for the first ta table to the second as the meta table right and then it returns for you the, the the table that you gave it at first so hopefully that makes sense uh, but anyways set meta table all right interesting stuff meta table there we go by the way I don't have to understand this I mean if you just want to copy and it will work yeah you can do that surely um, yeah anyways so here we have GL GFW or in fact you don't really need this as I said you can just go ahead and keep on using GFW GFW for example terminate but yeah so this is just a good convenience expected near end in line nine expected near end uh, rugged of course i forgot to return rust symptom <laughs> all right so we have no problem right now nice as you can see using meta tables you can do all sorts of amazing stuff nice all right so i also want to set an error callback 
So how to set an error callback? Well, um, the thing is, let me show you how you can get the declarations, okay, and the headers. So GLW, uh, GitHub, just search for it in your favorite browser and look it for the GFW repo and look for include GLW 3.h right and now you can look for in fact by the way you can press point to actually bring up an IDE by the way which is nice look at that it's an online IDE basically Visual Studio Code which is lovely all right let's go uh i can say control f for finding stuff up and i'm gonna look for gfw set air callback and let's see where it's declared there we go here it is just gonna copy this guy notice that i didn't actually copy this gfw api which i don't need um, do a GIT do its own magic to link libraries, so there's no need for this guy. This is basically platform dependent way of linking libraries. But anyways, GFW error fun. Now I actually need this type too, you know. So let's look for that. And there we go. This is where it's actually undeclared. And there we go. So type dev void gfw error phone and there you go. It's because the callback is should have this signature, that's why. Uh, and it returns void. All right, interesting. So now I can actually go ahead and say gfw dot say error callback. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now the thing is in LoGIT, I think since I read the the documentation. In fact, if you go to Lua FFI, right? Uh, there we go, Lua GIT FFI, and you can look through this documentation for Lua FFI. There is a lot of interesting information about Lua GIT and FFI, uh, which is really interesting. Uh, Lua GIT is kind of weird when it comes to performance. Um, like just don't try to be too smart, you know, or uh, or you go crazy because in fact, like LuaGIT kind of tries to guess what the code will do, and if you try to be smart about it to to improve performance, you may actually make it worse because LuaGIT won't understand your intention using those crazy optimizations, right? For example, like this is a really small example that is not too relevant, but uh, for example, don't cache values for especially, you know, like for example, glfw, don't, don't cache uh, functions like C functions, don't cache, uh, let's see, uh, don't use anonymous functions as much as possible. Right, so for example, here it's error callback. You can actually use an anonymous function, and you can just say function right and and do end like this, and there you go. You can now do your crazy stuff like right here. But no, anonymous functions are so bad in LuaGIT. So just create a function. So here I'm gonna pass an error callback function. So local function error callback. There you go. Uh, it will take error code and a description. Of course, in Lua, you don't need the types. Okay, but here we're going to use error, the error function, and we're going to say, for example, string of format error integer i. There we go. S. These are basically placeholders. This placeholder for integer and this placeholder for string. We're using string dot format there. You can you can implement this at whatever however you want. But yeah, so error code description, nice stuff. Okay, so I just include error code and description. Nice. Awesome. Okay. Mm-hmm. Care callback terminate. Now if we actually run this, all good, nice. 
Now let's actually add the, the create function signature declaration basically. So let's go ahead back in there. GFW create window. Let's look for the declaration of that. There we go. And notice that we need GFW window struct and we also need monitor struct. Okay, so let's declare those two. Or we can just search for them here, okay. So GLFW window. And let's go to the start where they're gonna be. There we go. Nice. And there you go. So you just say type dev struct, GFW window, GFW window, as simple as that. Let's actually take struct somewhere around here, why not? And then type dev struct GLFW. Here, monitor, because notice here, I also need the monitor struct, so glw monitor. You can notice that you basically just say the name twice and say type dev struct. Um, so yeah, that's what is a declaration. Okay, interesting stuff. Now, what if I run this? There we go, no errors. Now after initializing, in fact, initializing should happen after setting the error callback because the initialization of GLW can also fail. All right, nice. And now after the initialization, I'm gonna try to create a window. So local window <coughs> equal to GFW create window. Actually GFW dot create window. Okay, here you give it the width, 720 for example, for MD80, title, code attacker. Um, for the monitor pointer and share pointer, I want them as null in C and C++ it's null PTR. In Lua you can say nil. You may also be able to say zero, I'm not exactly sure, but yeah. Um, now if we try to print window, let's see what's gonna happen here. What is it gonna give me? Okay, as you can see it did give me C data, struct GFW window, pointer. Of course, this is a C, uh, C data, which is basically a um, user data kind of type. But yeah, so as you can see, it gives this me, it gives me the address and memory of that struct. Um, so yeah, now the thing is, if you don't initialize GLW, let's not, this is just how you create a comment in Lua. Look at this, it actually. All right, so as you can see, it gave me an error. So my our error callback is working. As you can see, error, this is the status code. And now this is this description. This is not what we expected, right? So it gives us C data, const char, which is basically a string in C, and this is the, its address. But this is not really what I want. I want the actual string, right? So how can I do that? Well, let's come back to our callback. And in description here, we have to say ffi.string to actually uh, cast a, a char pointer into an actual Lua string. Um, so let's make sure to add a parentheses right there. Okay. Now, there we go. Now you ha we have an actual <laughs> description string. The GFW library is not initialized. Lovely. As you can see right now, we even have, a, we set it an error callback for GFW, which is lovely, awesome stuff. Um, another thing is that this information is useless, like why would I need to know that it's coming from that line 21, um, just so useless. So what you can do, well, you can change the level, uh, you can change it to 2 for example. And now you no longer have that uh, information that is useless. It just tells you Lua GIT error, GLW library is not initialized, nice. Now if we make sure to initialize, of course that error won't happen. And it will create a window, hopefully. There we go, nice stuff. Now, uh, so, now after creating the window, we need the while loop. So while true do. And basically an infinite loop. And there we go, we get our window, nice. But we cannot close it. 
uh, and it's inresponsive. So let's say control C to actually close everything up to kill the process. Okay. Um, now, in fact, we have to use GLFW window should close. Okay, but before that, let's actually try to pull events. This is basically the way to actually process events to tell basically when you call this GFW to pull events, right? What happens is that it goes ahead, it processes all the events from uh, using the window system, right? Um, so you can actually, for example, like if there's any closing events, then it will handle it basically, some sort. Uh, but yeah, if there's any key callback, for example, or some callback that you put it for the window, like keys or mouse or something like that, then it would actually call it this point in pull events. You can also say wait for events, wait for events. That's another uh, GFW function. And it's kind of the same thing, it does the same task, it process events, but here, uh, wait for events actually waits, it, it, it pauses the program's execution until there is an event to handle, basically, which can be useful for GUI applications, which doesn't need to update its, uh, its rendering or anything unless if there is an event from the user, uh, which can help, you know, save power, you know, uh, which is interesting, uh, yeah. GFW dot pull events. So now, if I, so, I can use pull events. I have to declare it, of course. Void pull events. Hopefully, I spelled it right. But of course, I forgot GFW to add it here. So GFW pull events. Now, now we're pulling events, right? We're handling events, but we're not like the infinite loop doesn't 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 ever you know stop you know so what you should do uh, while GFW window should close so basically when the window wants to close we're just gonna end the loop end the infinite loop just by adding this condition GFW window should close and in C, you normally say not like this, but in Lua, it's actually like this. But the problem here, this won't work. You know why? Because too simply that in C, there is nothing called a Boolean value. There is only integers, right? And not an integer is not what you expect to. Okay, so to actually check rightfully, you have to say equal equal to zero. So if GL GFW window should close equal to zero, which is basically false in C, then well, in the loop. So window. So GFW window should close window is equal to false. So if it's false, then keep on looping. Otherwise, well, stop the loop. Okay, so now the thing is, let's make sure to add the dot there and let's make sure to declare that, uh, that function. So Mm, void or actually no integer. So GFW create when uh, window should close. And here I can pass in the GFW window. Window. And uh, hopefully that's right. So let's see. Now if I try to close the window, there you go. It closes gracefully. Lovely. And of course, make sure that you're terminating the library at the end of the program. Nice. Because EFW may actually affect some system settings that will never reset if you don't terminate GFW in the first place. So just make sure to always terminate it. All right, interesting stuff. Uh, by the way, you can also, if you need some, let's say, standard C function, then you can also declare that and it will, Lua GIT will go ahead automatically, will import that library for you. For example, if you say, hmm, I don't know, let's see, for example, malloc, okay, void malloc, and what it takes, actually it gives me a yeah, void pointer, malloc, and then it takes in the size t, 
um, let's say it's basically in sign long long something like that size like if you do like this like for example malloc which I think is a standard function in the standard library basically of C then it will go ahead and basically automatically import the library for you okay and then you can actually access that, uh, that method using for example you can also go ahead and, and add C there like uh, add printf for example so ffi instead of ffi.glw for example or something like that you say ffi.c and for example ffi.c or printf or ffi.c.malloc but of course you have to declare those functions first so luigi it knows that it has to links to them and and knows its declarations but let me show you let me show you if we go back to ffi library you can notice that it actually gives us that here for example if you say this as you can see this is basically the signature of printf the declaration of printf now you can in fact go ahead and you can say for example ffi.c.printf now okay you can give it hello world mm -hmm. and notice it's working you see how it goes? Lovely stuff. Interesting. And uh, right, lovely. So that's basically how it works. Now, if we want to open, uh, if we want to use OpenGL, of course we have to make the window, uh, the current context thing. So GFW, make context current. If I remember well, window. And if we actually add that, by the way, I don't need printf. I, that was just for the example. Okay, so GLW make uh, void, I think. Make context current. Uh, GLW window. Window. Let's go. I mean, yeah, that's surely the case because in fact I have to use the namespace GLW and let's go. So it seems to not have any error, so I would assume it's working correctly. So that is nice. Now, in fact, I can go ahead and add GL or OpenGL functions. So GL dot uh, let's start actually hmm. Let's present to the screen and how do you present in OpenGL compatibility at least GL, you see gl.swap buffers in fact not even in compatibility You know, it's like you present using that But in fact, this is an actual gfw function not gl function So this is how you present you say gfw.swap buffers because in fact, by default, GFW uses uh, multi-buffering, multi-window buffering. Um, so you have to say swap buffers to actually present uh, and and go to the next image. But anyways, GFW swap buffers, nice. And of course, I think you give it the window too. Yeah, here you should give it the window. And let's try to actually put a declaration here. So void. Uh, GFW swap buffers. Of course, it takes in a window. There we go. And hopefully, that would work. Let's see. There we go. As you can notice, we have a black window right now, which means it is properly presented to the screen. Now, in fact, we can use OpenGL to clear the window. So gl clear, well gl dot clear, but to clear properly, well, uh, you have to actually give it an enum here. Uh, but of course, we have to declare everything ourselves. So we need to find out what is that enum. So gl clear. Let's look for gl clear. Hmm. Let's see, 
okay as you can see it takes in gl bit bit field mask gl bit field is basically in signed ins so yeah and this is the possible values gl color buffer bit depth buffer bit and stencil buffer bit in my case i only care about the color buffer bit so what is color buffer bit let's see if it actually gives us that or not well it doesn't look like because I need the value of this color buffer bit hmm. so let's look for the headers of OpenGL hopefully let's see blue alpha Oh man, that's too much light. Oh, <laughs> oh me, what was that? Okay, you need to go to the register. Oh my, come on, bro. Let's look for the headers, anyways. Uh, let's remove that GL clear thing. Okay, this is the registry, and where's the headers? There we go. API and extension header files, nice. Okay, I think this is what we need. Okay, let's look for GL clear. Mm -hmm. Or actually, let's look for GL clear buffer bit or a uh, color buffer bit. Hmm color buffer bit doesn't look like it's here maybe let's check the other one core or ARB there we go as you can see GL color buffer bit is this value right here which is interesting so 0x0004 zero 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 this is of course in hex and this value in hex well hex to to decimal This is the value that you need. But in fact, in Lua, you can just use the hexadecimal directly, which is interesting. So I can just go ahead directly, go ahead and, and put that in on value. And it would be just fine, hopefully. GL clear, okay. I forgot to actually add that. So void um, GL clear. It takes in a GL bit field, uh, which is basically, let's see one second, GL bit field. I know what it is, but I just want to show you how you can find out, hopefully, if we can find it here. There we go. As you can see, type diff in signed int GL bit field. So it's an in signed int, it's just an alias. So in signed int mm, mask, okay. Now if we actually run this up, there we go. Still the same thing, but it is actually clear right now. Clear in the window, nice. Now, in fact, uh, 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 let's see. By the way, you can also, of course, make a kind of like an enum table, right? Where here you can say GL, color buffer bit and stuff like that. So what it's called, GL, color buffer bit, there we go, okay. You can say something like this, for example, equal to, uh -huh. let's paste the value here. There we go. Now I can go ahead and say enum dot gl color buffer bit. There you go. Nice. And uh, now let's actually add another function which is called clear color. So you say gl dot clear color, and then you can actually set the clear color that you need that, that you want. Okay, so Let's say, for example, white. 
one 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 basically the first value is red green blue and alpha alpha is for transparency but to, uh, to enable transparency I'll show you later how you can do that but anyway so void gl clear color I you give it I think a float r g p and I think a probably okay let's see how it goes of course you can find all of that in the headers that I've shown you but there you go we got a white clear color if you if you want red for example you turn off the green and blue light completely using zero and you leave the red light and there you go if you want a dimmer red light you can see 0.5 which is half red and there you go it's darker right now nice so you got the point and of course right now the transparent the, the alpha doesn't work as you can see it doesn't work and too simply it doesn't work because well if you want to use transparency you have to make the frame buffer transparent and to make the frame buffer transparent before creating the window you have to actually set some hints so dfw uh, window hint right so like this all right for the enum though i'm gonna put it actually upwards somewhere around after the declaration stuff uh, let's put it maybe huh I don't know maybe here okay so you got that out of the way now gfw.window hint now of course let's look for the window hints and since we're talking about the window hints before transparency let's look for how to set up the uh, the OpenGL version okay so how do you do that well okay gfw context I think uh, major or something version right version major there we go as you can see so this is its value let's add it to the to the enum stuff is equal to the value copy and minor same thing let's copy that too and there we go nice stuff you can also deactivate double buffer if you want to there's refresh rate and srgb capable srgb is interesting samples are interesting too crazy stuff double buffering hinted attribute refresh rate double buffering you can look for the documentation for all of these hints and they're quite interesting uh, i mean if you actually go ahead and say gfw window hints you're gonna find them in the window guide there we go and there's all sorts of craziness right uh, there is this whole thing and by default for example the window is resizable you can actually set that to false and false in C is just zero basically and true is one red bits that's the the depth of the colors the refresh rate don't care here zero to int max or gfw don't care refresh rate the refresh rate is just how much images you want to process for example my screen here have 75 hertz in refresh rate which means you can actually uh, present 75 images per second which is quite nice okay um not not exactly present but basically show 75 images per second but anyways srgb capable srgb is really nice it results in much nicer colors color perception but yeah 
double buffering, client API. For example, if you're using Vulkan instead of OpenGL, you're gonna say no API. If you're using OpenGL ES, which is for phones or embedded devices, you gotta use this with the GLW client API. And you know how you can actually extract those enums. Uh, that's why I've shown you everything. Here's the debug context, forward compatibility. This one is for Mac OS, I think. So yeah, in my case right here, I'm just using compatibility profile, but if you really want to, yeah, you actually have to use core profile. Um, it's basically the modern OpenGL. Uh, written a frame buffer, interesting. Uh, okay, so what's, really, what's quite interesting is samples and Transparent frame buffer, what it is. Transparent frame buffer, let's see. Transparent, there we go. So as you can see, if you said this one, this guy, let me look for its value. There we go, nice. So let's copy that guy. And let's paste in its value. Nice. Now, in fact, if you go ahead, GFW init. Uh, actually, before creating the window, let's say you say window hint. Let's set the version of OpenGL though. So, tl of uh, enum.gfw context version major, that's the hint. And then you give it the value. In my case, I'm just gonna go with OpenGL. I don't know. Um, let's go with three. Okay, I'm gonna do that and then minor. Excuse my low Vim skills, but yeah. All right, lovely stuff. Let's give it another anim. In my case here, let's try to create a transparent frame buffer so it can actually, the window can support transparency. So you say transparent frame buffer and you can see one. One basically means true. And now you're gonna notice that uh, I didn't add window hint yet. Yep, I didn't add that, okay. So void glw window hint, it give it the integer hint, and then you give it the integer value. If we save and run, you can notice that, well, we have this beautiful window that is transparent. Look at that. And since it's red, it actually, you know, kind of like uh, blend in the background with the color, with the red color. Crazy stuff, interesting. Um, if the color, if the color is black, but transparent, it's gonna be completely transparent, basically. So, uh, Notice, let's go, it's completely transparent, but you can still draw into it, which is really lovely. So let's go back. And now let's actually try to, uh, I think, draw a triangle maybe. Color buffer a bit. Yeah, let's try to draw a triangle, I think. GL clear color. Well, after clearing the window and before uh, presenting, which is basically swap buffers. Well, we're gonna do GL begin. So GL dot begin. Then you basically give it the primitive that you want. Let's look for the primitives. Okay, so if you go to registry, I think you can hopefully find GL triangles. I think there we go. As you can see, GL triangles. GL begin, oh my god, GL begin, GL triangles, but of course, enum.gl triangles. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's basically how you do it. Now let's add the enum. 
equal to by the way it doesn't have to be the same name you can do whatever you want as long as it equals to that value doesn't matter so yeah gl triangles there you go that's gl.begin then also you have gl.end and it takes nothing okay and of course we're going to use gl vertex uh, 2f for giving it two float values because I only care about X and Y. You can use 3F, maybe even 4F, I don't know. 3F, 3D for double, 3I for integers. I only care about flows. Okay, so 3, 3F, so let's give it two values. Let's say, let's start from 0, 0, which is basically the center of the screen. Let's give it another vertex. Uh, okay, from 0, for example. Then I'm just gonna. Oh my god, no. Okay. Just like that. Oh man. Okay, let's go. But now I have to, of course, make sure that those functions are declared. But before that, let's make sure to use point. Point. There we go. What's lovely about Lua and this setup is that your global namespace is clean. Um, every library is in its own table thing, which is lovely. Um, now here, first of all, let's start by gl begin. So void gl begin, which takes in an integer uh, or an signed integer for the the enum and primitive basically. And the next thing is GLEnd, which doesn't take any value. And there's also GL vertex, which void GL vertex 2F, which of course takes two float values, X and Y. And if I actually save this and run, symbol GL vertex 3F. Somehow I use 3F, interesting. Yep, I wanted to use 2F for... Mm -hmm. Let's go. There we go, I got my triangle. And it's on a transparent frame buffer. Transparent window. <laughs> Look at that beauty. Oh man. You can change the, the draw color using... Hmm. GL color, I think, or something like that. Clear color. Hmm. Yeah, I think you say GL color. Then you give it the color that you want to draw with, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. So before put in the vertices, let's say the gl dot color if I remember actually hmm. like is vertex 4f here though? I mean 3f or 2f ok let's try the other ones there we go, nice so you have up to three three values. Nice. Now probably I can find in color. There we go. Color three F vertex. Interesting. Interesting. Color. I don't think it's like this though. Uh, you can see GL compatibility. Uh, let's go vertex color. Hmm. Okay, let's look for hmm. open GL. Triangle, compatibility triangle. Mm -hmm. uh, 
bro, like what? Let's say legacy. Legacy triangle. There we go. Yeah, it's called GL color 3F, just as I expected. Yeah, GL color 3F. There we go. Color 3F. And here you give it the color of the vertex that you want. For example, 100. Zero, zero. Okay. And if we actually add that val add that function, so void gl color 3f, it takes in three floats r, g, b, basically. And now if we actually save and run this, we get a red triangle. Nice. But in fact, if you actually go ahead and add more of these. after each vertex you can actually set the color of each vertex if I'm not mistaken so for example set this to green and the other one to blue and there we go we got a beautiful triangle red green and blue this is the first vertex second vertex third vertex lovely stuff and SRGB looks much nicer uh, if you if it's available so you can also add srgb capable in gfw you can also add samples so uh, where is gfw there we go so srgb where is it where is it where is it where is it, where is it? let's see uh, RGB capable. There we go. So I'm interested in these two guys. Okay. Let's add the N on there. That's RGB capable. There we go. GLW samples equal to. That's the. Let's see. There we go. Nice stuff. Now I can actually go ahead and add more hints. Oh, window hint. Enum.glw. SRGB capable. Comma 1, which is basically true. GF to window hint. Enum.glw samples. Here you can actually set multi sampling, for example, 0. Uh, so if you notice multi sampling, not sure if I have some kind of way to zoom in here. Um, maybe some desktop events could help. Let's see. Uh, magnify the entire desktop. If I apply, uh, it's not enough though. But you can hopefully notice that there is some jagged lines. It's it's jagged. Okay, there is no multi sampling. Uh, but if we let's can I go back? Okay. Uh, let's go back and let's set multi sampler for example eight samples. And I think it's much smoother right now. I'm not exactly sure, but I think so. At least it should be in theory. Unless if I'm missing something, but yeah. So yeah, there you go. Nice stuff. So I think that was it for this video. You probably want to set data true if you have a Mac. But yeah, GW context, no error to monitor. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Pretty cool stuff. You can go crazy with this however you want. But this is a good start and of course you can apply all these techniques that I showed you in this video for any other kind of library hopefully as long as it doesn't use some kind of crazy advanced C stuff you know uh, that is not supported by Luigi IT so yeah so pretty much that is amazing stuff cool 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 
Um, so yeah, you, you may find the link in the description for this. This guy you can even, you know, like go ahead and, and contribute if you want to. If you want me to create a library that would help, you know, doing such a thing, right? Like that would abstract away OpenGL for Lua GIT and stuff like that, let me know. I may do videos, videos where I create such libraries, that would be cool. But yeah, so that's was it for this video and see you later. Goodbye everyone.